Did you know that the 10 things that's caused this little city called Aarhus to be ranked to be the number one happiest city on earth are all habits and shifts that you can apply to your life today to elevate your happiness and experience some of this joy that these individuals who live in the happiest city on planet earth do because this is my hometown and exactly what I've done since moving to the US at a very young age. And in today's video, I will show you exactly how you can do that as well. One of the things that they do here is that they swim in the ocean all year round because Even though I don't have a freezing cold ocean in my backyard, I've seeked out cold plunges throughout my time here and even got one recently on my balcony to gain these same happiness benefits. Now, I would have loved to bring you to one of those beaches that just gets packed with people in the winter. But people do this naked here, so I thought that would be a tiny bit inappropriate. And while this is just one out of the 10 most influential habits that just happen to make the city all sparkle with joy, and my hope with me sharing these 10 healthy habits that are sparkled with joy all over this beautiful, happiest city in the world that you can apply some of these to your life and sparkle it with joy all over your city as well. And as someone who grew up here but decided to move, I'm gonna give my personal take on why all who's topped the Institute of Quality of Life list of the 200 happiest cities in the world. Also, it's not normal to film in Denmark like this, so people are staring, but we're just gonna have to deal with that today because otherwise we could not share this happiness with the world and we need to do that. Now, this city may have been ranked as the happiest city in the world, but I believe that it also is the top-notch level when it comes to having the fittest humans in the world. And that's why my take on this is gonna be a little bit different. Let's do it. Cause second up on the list is transportation. Cause it ain't driving, but biking. Or walking, or in my case, rollerblades. These rollerblades are not only gonna be my transportation today, <laughs> but they have been for the last 10 years whenever I've been in Denmark. What do you think is the reason that Aarhus is the happiest place on earth? We can bike around, uh, walk from the city to the house. There's not so much distance between. And the cool thing is that when she says that there's not a lot of distance between, it's like, it'll still take you an hour. But the Danish culture, that's just normal. Mm -hmm. You just walk that hour. We're currently on our way to the city, to the fisherman. Or go by bike for 20 minutes. And we even do it with a happy, grateful spirit. Regardless of the snow, the rain, the storms. And being in the US, this for sure is more difficult due to the distances and roads. However, I still make it happen by going on post-workout walks, rollerblade by the beach, or walk to whatever I got going on if I can. Today, I decided to walk to my acting session. It's a 50-minute walk. When I was a kid, it's no matter the weather, snow, rain, stormy, we were biking to school and that's just how it was. But the cool thing about that is that when we see something like that as just the norm, as something that isn't tough, then other little things that some people maybe would as see challenging to you is not as challenging because you're used to living a little bit rougher, tougher. I know that there's worse things in this world than bicycling, snow and, and rain and stuff, but you know, the little challenges in life, when we get used to those, they add up and we toughen up. We get thick skin. Now talking about healthy living, people here don't just commute to work, they also go to the gym, regardless of their age. Like literally every single one of my four grandparents who live in the city still work out. They do gymnastics, water aerobics, they go to the gym. Granddad, how old are you? I'm 86. And what did you do last night? Outdoor fitness, where we make gymnastic exercise and such things. Does that bring happiness? Yes. Your life. It is so wonderful. Whenever we come there, people start smiling all the time they are there <laughs> because they feel good in making exercise. And dad, you're the workout king. No, I'm not. Yeah. <laughs> it's just the norm here. Everyone works out. When I go to these group classes here with like people that are maybe 40 years older than me, I'm like, oh my God. And this is a habit that I think comes as no surprise to anyone that I definitely have applied and brought with me to the US as well as try to spread to people all over the world to make it part of their lifestyle. <laughs> And talking about movements, when people hang out here, they don't just hang out, sit with a coffee. I mean, sometimes they do. But they go on walks. They walk, they move their bodies while they're chatting, while they're drinking their cup of coffee. And the way that I've brought this with me to the US is whenever I'm hanging out with friends, I ask them if they want to go with me on a hike instead of maybe grabbing lunch or coffee. You, I'm so happy every it. time I come visit, we can get to hang out. Me too. And of course, she's making me work out. <laughs> yes, <Right>? yes. <laughs> 
And that leads me to speak with you about babies. And the level of trust that we have with our fellow humans in the city. Because the norm here is that when we go on a walk around the city with our strollers and want to take a little lunch break at a cafe, then we leave the stroller with our baby inside of it sleeping while we're in the cafe. Completely unlooked at. Because you just know your baby say everyone in this city has this enormous trust to each other that everyone is just gonna treat each other nice and not do anything to harm someone else and like i've been rollerblading around and just leaving my stuff here with my phone and headphones however this may be pushing in and just be a pernilla thing because i'm pretty sure my entire family would have gotten a little upset if they'd seen me do that i just trust that nobody's gonna take it because that's what i've been brought up to believe that you can trust strangers they are good people i will say i learned the hard way that you should not do that in america How However, this trust in people is something that's benefited me while living in America. But before we get to that, let me just first share. According to Denmark.dk, their official website. Oh my God, this is my mom's glasses. I almost... Everything so big. Trust is an invisible Danish resource. In Denmark, trust is the basis of the most social interactions as well as business and government. In fact, Danes are considered some of the most trusting people in the world. Trust comes from different forms. Most people trust their friends and family. But Denmark also benefits from what enthral anthropologists call a general societal trust, which is the ability to trust people you have never met before. In Denmark, people are assumed to be honest, reliable, unless they somehow show that they are and this leads to fewer social conflicts and crime because it creates a sense of harmony that increases happiness and security. Now, yes, you may live in a more dangerous place in the world and your safety is obviously very important to be cautious and aware of. And that's also why roller skating at home at 11 p.m. at night through the forest like I did during my trip in Aarhus after my brother had invited us for dinner, I maybe wouldn't have chosen to do in LA. But during typical day-to-day -day interactions, I believe that the more genuine and trustworthy that you are yourself, the more of that you're going to attract into your life life as well. And that's why I feel that this trust that I have in people has led me to meet so many incredible humans wherever I've been in the world. And this trust and wanting to take care of each other leads me to share the craziness about taxes. Because a typical Danish person that makes less than 85,000 a year gives over 52 to 55% of their income in tax. And for anyone who earns more than 85% adds on an additional 15% to their taxes. My mom, for example, this is her business, which is right next to her house. You've built a pretty successful business. What do you have to pay in taxes? 52% uh, and then 52% extra. Meaning that they basically give over two thirds of their income. And the crazy cool thing is that a majority of the Danish people, they just hand over this amount to the government, trusting that this proportion of their personal income will be spent to benefit their country and their city. And it's true because it does come with its benefits because healthcare is free, school at any level is free. When I went to this school, as well as high school, as well as if I had chosen to become a doctor at the university everything is free but not just free when i was in high school and i turned 18 i got paid to go to school if i had chosen to become a doctor i would leave with my certificate with zero debt and having gotten paid a monthly income by the government because i had attended university that is how the danish society works and in the case that you somehow lose your job the government will pay you monthly until you find a new job and there's just this like sense of trusting that the people who live here they're gonna want to go out and search for a new job even though they know that if they just were jobless for the rest of their life they would still be taken care of it definitely wouldn't be enough to get rich off of but it would be enough to pay the bills i can never wear makeup when i'm here because the wind is going to turn into tears now this type of high taxes and everything being free is maybe something that you don't have the opportunity of benefiting from wherever you live in the world and while i personally didn't benefit from this either because instead of choosing to take a free and paid education to become a doctor or whatever else i'd chosen to do i decided to move to the states to be broke free years while educating myself and pursuing a dream of mine and well off of the money that I then started to make, I paid less in taxes, tried my best to be smart about the money that I earned to set myself up smart financially and will pay off my health insurance and whatever else I needed off of these money that I made. Which is something I'm still working on and forever trying to get better at by the way. And I think that no matter what our current financial situation looks like, we can always choose to map out a plan and take control of it today. Because my belief is that we are always 100% in control of our life if we choose to believe so. Let's talk about food, because if you watch my videos, you know that Danish grocery stores are on the top three list of my favorite places on earth because the produce is so fresh. And as someone who's been living in LA, it is a lot less expensive. The produce just tastes 
better and fresher. And just the meals in general that are served here are just like whole foods. And we all know that when we eat more whole foods, it affects our body, it affects our mind. Whole foods are just so good for us. There is no debating it. And well, if you watch my videos, you know that eating healthy food is definitely a habit that I've tried to bring with me to America and even found ways to buy the cheaper stuff out here as well as make healthier choices during social events. And no matter where you are in the world, every single day, we can all choose to make those healthier choices. You just gotta commit and that's it. What do you think is the reason that Aarhus is the happiest place on earth? We have the sea, the ocean, we have the trees, uh, the woods. Yes, it has been proven by scientists again and again and again that nature generates many positive emotions such as calmness, joy, creativity, and it can also facilitate concentration. And wherever you are in the world, you may have to drive to that nature, which is exactly what I do when I live in LA. And it is worth it every single time. The next reason why Aarhus is one of the happiest places on earth, according to me, is that there is this level of stability. You grow up, you choose an education you want to go to, the system supports and guides you through this process. There's an intelligent transform system. Every single human, of course, deals with challenges. But I will say that I feel like the city of Aarhus is developed in a way that has an environment to feel safe and stable so that there's less fears and worries involved when it comes to navigating these ups and downs that life comes with. And that, of course, is not something that we can have anywhere in the world but i do believe that we can create it within ourselves and the way that i've done this on my roller coaster of a ride has been through developing a deeper sense of self-awareness self-confidence and self-love by reading meditating and journaling through every single challenge to find solutions develop the self-identity that would be capable of getting out of whatever hole i'd buried myself into and support myself in navigating through these challenging times as well as, of course, having an incredible support system around me. And talking about support system, habit number 10, you guys, is something that Denmark basically came up with and that has already been used in some parts of the world. But I think we should spread it even further, which is Hygge. And what Hygge consists of is taking time away from the daily rush and worries and fast-paced motion of life and stepping back to spend time together with people that you care about, to relax and enjoy life's more quiet pleasures. My brother and his girlfriend invited us over for dinner in their apartment and they're cooking for us. And it's just a norm and literally a must for people here. What do you like about living in Aarhus? Everybody's so social in Aarhus. Everybody goes out and does stuff. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> but it's true, everyone's out regardless of the weather. It's so awesome. When I'm in Denmark, people want to hike it every day. And I love that. And it really just brings me a next level sense of calm and love in a way that I maybe don't experience as much any other place in the world. However, as an introvert, I also sometimes have needed to learn to say no and step back so that I can take time to do my thing just because I need that as well. Both because I want to be creating constantly, but I also just need my me time to do my thing. Okay, before I share the one final thing that Denmark's just literally gotten better than anywhere else in the world, I think with anywhere we go in the world, there's always going to be pros and cons. And all we can do is learn from the different places that we either get to go explore or learn about like from a video like this one and apply the things that we feel are going to be valuable in our life. Because if we feel whole and we bring these habits with us wherever we go in life, then we don't need to be in that specific location in order for us to be happy we can bring it with us wherever we go and what i try to do is bring these things that i've learned from having grown up in this beautiful beautiful city always i try my best to bring that with me wherever i go whether it's in la or wherever else i get to travel in the world and i think we can all do that right we can choose whether or not we want to commute in an active way to our work if we want to move a little bit closer to work so that we can walk or bicycle to work every day we choose whether or not we're willing to find a lake that we can swim in in the morning or fill our tub up with ice cubes. We choose if we are willing to invest time and energy into either creating or becoming a part of a community that has this hygge, this next level connection where you just feel love on a new level. It may take time, it may be challenging, it may be hard, but for anything that we want in life, I really want us all to strive for more happiness. Those little things that may seem a little bit challenging, they compound effect into us becoming stronger and stronger and stronger and so any challenge that we deal with in life we should be so grateful for this may not just be an obvious thing but it's definitely a day right thing it's a Danish but it's just on another level I cannot I've never been able to find it anywhere else in the world
so fun. And for the weeks that I was back in Aarhus, I had made sure to stack up on enjoying these pastries, and that made it a perfect timing for me to embark on one of the hardest fitness challenges that I tried once I returned back to LA. So stay tuned for that video and maybe consider subscribing.